Hello, my name is Ralph and welcome to the channel. It's my time, let's go. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about push rods and uh, what the different types there are of them. It's an important part of the valve train, so I thought I might just kind of breeze through a little bit of that for the early years and uh, let you know what's out there and what has been out there. So, let's get started with it. While we try to explain a little bit about the different kinds of push rods that are in there, uh, we have to think about what they are. Now the push rods are, are mainly used to transfer motion from the camshaft to the valve stems and up and down. So that's their main purpose. So you want them strong and not flat, not too flexible. And that's where push rods like Chrome Molly and things like that come in uh, because it makes them a lot stronger. Now different companies make different strengths of ones. Uh, I know that uh, the fueling actually makes ones that's like 7 16 so a 7 16 nut will thread on it and uh, they swear by them and say that you can increase the horsepower by, just by putting these in and having direct contact and the very little flex in them at all. So the different manufacturers have tried to do different things uh, to make their push rods more what you want. Throughout the years, Harley Davidson made all kinds of different things and they tried different things. And uh, that's what makes it so interesting in, in exchanging parts through the, the years to see what fits what and what exactly goes on that. Each, each different grouping of the Harley from the shovels to the from the pants to the shovels to the evolu evolutions to the to the twin cams, uh, all improved on the lifters as much as they could. Push rods made all kinds of different materials in the, in the early years aluminum was thought to be the thing uh, to use for them and there's more high-tech aluminums today that are used quite often with them. So they also use uh, chrome molly uh, which is a lot stronger and a lot slimmer push rod. Um, so they've tried to improve these things uh, all through the years. Everyone should always check the specs on their push rods when they're going to install them. With so many different types being out there today, there's so many different thread lengths on them. Some of them are 24, some of them are 32 threads per inch. Uh, all different length threads per inch. And when you do it, you need to know what you have in order to adjust it down into your hydraulic. You need to know how many turns to turn that down to set your hydraulic in the middle of the lifter. Now the average lifter has 200 thou movement and you want it basically in a hundred thou in the middle. Now, some manufacturers, uh, they suggest more than that. You know, they've got their own specs. So do check out all the specs uh, when you use a new set of push rods and put them in. So we've kind of laid out the, the different kinds of push rods here to the best of my knowledge, and I'll, I'll sort of try to go through them all. But the knuckleheads from 1936 to 47 used this kind of block, which was different than the rest of them, quite, quite a bit taller, and it used a solid lifter like this. One was shorter for the intake, one was longer, I think, for the exhaust. And these were quite different because the tops of these, as you can see, they have no ball. They just have a pocket in there. And that's what the rocker arm fits in that pocket in the knuckles. So the pan heads from 48 to 52 use a similar setup uh, with the solids, with the adjustable part being on the lifter itself. In 53 to 84, the shovel heads and some of the pan heads, of course, uh, went to this sort of system with the hydraulics. Now, you can have solids and you can have the hydraulics, but Harley switched to the hydraulic system, which was basically a small lifter like this, and this was the hydraulic unit that went inside of it. And then this whole unit went inside of there. Now, when the hydraulics got worn out, a lot of guys would switch and decide to go and use solid, what they called a solid conversion on them. And the solid conversions were, were quite common and there, was, there were different sorts of them. And sometimes they come in a kit with push rods and sometimes they wouldn't. Now these, these type of ones would just slide in there and they're quite common in the s, &S sort of sort of type of push rod. And they would require the shovel push rods with a small end to go in there like that. So that, that is what was be required for these kind. They also made this kind and these had a spring went in them like that and then this big thing here and the idea was that the spring kind of dampened it some now as you can see there's no adjustment on these at all so what they did and usually came in a kit with a push rod like this and the push rod had adjustments here and this would sit right in the pocket there and that's how that would work and would be adjusted as solids would be adjusted we don't want to mix up our hydraulic lifters when you have them together keep them together they are a set they're machine set and the same pieces should go in them now you see this won't go down in that lifter and this happens quite often when you put them in if you've pulled it out and you're going to set your push rods 
and then the spring won't go in. All you have to do is take a small pin. There's a check ball in here, and if you take a small pin, stick it in, look, that lifter will go right down. Now you can get your push rods in and do all the adjustments that you have to do. Along with the shovel heads came a, came a lot of different things. Um, this was a Sifton type hydraulic lifter. Uh, worked for a week. Sifton used to be a good name, but I'm not too impressed with them these days. They're just imports like everything else, I think. Not quite sure, but from what they tell me. So, these sorts, these are like a Jim's lifter, and many of those come with an adjustable push rod like this. And this would have been the early style as well with the adjustment nut. Here is a set of taper lights from Jim's, again, with the nut and adjustment on the bottom. So there's a few different kinds that you can use. In, in 84 to 99, we went to the Evolutions. Now, I don't have a lifter block. I just put the last one I had on, on my motor. But you know what the lifter blocks look like. And they had these kind of lifters. Jim's, s, s lots of guys made them. These, these are s s lifters particularly. And they are hydraulic. That sits in here. They didn't have adjustable push rods. They had these. But the stock push rods from the Evolutions were all color coded. Like this is yellow. Another one's green. And they were four different color codes to tell you which which to put them in. So if you had all your push rods out and you weren't sure, you, you could relate to the color codes if they were still on them to try and tell you where that one should go. Be it exhaust, be it intake, front, rear, uh, they're all numbered like that. So as you can see, the color codes are there for them. The rear exhaust is purple, the rear intake's blue, front intake yellow, and front exhaust in green. Uh, so it's easy for anybody to find these codes and uh, in your manual or anywhere and distinguish what those rods are before you put them in. So Evolutions all had these hydraulic lifter systems in them. Many aftermarket types of adjustable push rods came out on the market. These ones here, as you can see the difference in them, one is aluminum and one is what they call chrome molly. And the chrome molly is smaller and stronger. And they still have these adjustments. So these would go down, then you could lock your lifter into place where you wanted it. With these types, you had to take the top rocker arms out. Basically the top rocker box off, take the rocker arms out in order to put the push rods in and they were non-adjustable. The aftermarket came along with a lot of these adjustable types like this. And then they became also came with the what they call the quick times. And the quick times will screw right up inside the push rod all the way. The new three-piece design, they called it, one, the nut, and this, three pieces. You were able to loosen the nut right down on this to the very end with then you would this would enable you to put these push rods in without taking the top end off your motor which is a real time saver when it comes to the twin cams it would screw up inside all the way and then you could install your push rods and then screw it out to the length you needed and so many turns and then you were set and they're quite common today especially when you're doing changes in the uh, in the twin cams etc so these were the basic lifters for them. One of the problems of these lifters, and all of them, was that the these run on a small roller bearing. Now Jim's makes a bigger tappet, uh, axle, they've tried all sorts of things to make them stronger. So what we actually have in here is Jim's tappet number 2459-1. And this is a big, big, uh, big axle tappet. It's a power glide hydraulic system. Uh, but what happens in the engine when the rollers go, this is what happens and the rollers all fall in the engine and uh, it creates quite a racket before it finally comes completely to pieces. So there's something to keep an eye on. As you can see, this one had worn badly uh, and destroyed the camshaft as well. Last but not least, our twin cams. There's your lifter block, although as we all know, the lifter, the lifter sleeve or the bore now is made right in the case and they use this type of lifters. So these are a hydraulic and they're more contained in here. Uh, to strengthen them up with bigger axles and stuff improved over the evolutions. So that kind of give you an idea on push rods and the different types that are there. The solid lifter conversion kits quite often come with the push rod or they use the existing hydraulic uh, type of uh, push rod in there. But that'll give you a cross section of just what's out there and what's been used through the years um, as we get up into the M8s. Uh, not my department so I can't really tell you there what's going on. Uh, but that'll help you anyway if you have a bunch of parts and you're looking at them and going, what is that for? What is that lifter for? What do I need? 
Uh, maybe this will help you out a little bit. Now sometimes when you inspect your push rods and you look at them, you can see what they call little witness marks on them. And they're little marks that show up on them and they tell you where your push rod is rubbing in there and where it can be. With your average push rod running 10, 11 inches, uh, they've got to make sure that they don't flex too much and that becomes an important factor transferring the message from your cam up to your lifters on what's happening. So being rigid but yet some flexibility so they don't just snap and break uh, has been the real trick of manufacturers over the years to come up with new ones. Some manufacturers, uh, like we have these these gym taper lights, uh, I know that you can't probably see it on there, but they are actually written on the push rods, the threads per inch, so that you know when you're going to use this push rod, there's no guesswork, and Jim's has done quite a job with that. A lot of companies do it. Uh, I think Screaming Eagle ones, um, Riviera, I believe, do it on them. Uh, some of the different ones engrave them, which is very helpful to, to people after a bike has changed hands many times, or you've possibly just bought other parts and had them on hand. Now, I myself have a set of these uh, beautiful what they call velvet touch lifters. And they were made, they were the cat's ass for the shovels in the early years. And they were made by V Thunder. I'm planning to do this project on a shovel motor that I've had for many years and I've accumulated the parts in the early years and I never got to it. And these velvet touch lifters are something that I'm gonna put in them. And just to let you know how long I've had them, here's the instruction sheet. <laughs> so, it'll be interesting, but I'm sure we can source out the information uh, somewhere today rather than having to find a VCR to play this in. It's always important to pay attention to the manufacturer's specs. Take these, for instance. These are shovel head, Jim's ones. Um, power glide tappets, I think I believe is what they're called, and they have their own setting. It's not to go by the threads per inch, they have their own setting on how many turns, and they actually want two and a half turns down depending, depending on the threads per inch. So you'll have to read the instructions and they'll tell you exactly how far it will turn, how far that will move down in one complete turn, and figure out your depth. A lot of guys can make mistakes with these, try to set them up like solids, you know, they sort of look like a solid, um, but it won't work at all and I expect that the uh, bike I'm working on has had some some kind of troubles like that So that's the story on those So always check the manufacturer specs because there's always something different in there And if worse comes to worse go by threads per inch unless you're using some sort of specialty tappet and then Check and see what the manufacturer has to say about his specialty tappet Save yourself some trouble an interesting note was that from 1948 to 55, Harley used uh, actually a hydraulic lifter of sorts and uh, that only ran up to about 1955 because they found that pumping oil all the way up there uh, wasn't very efficient and they changed to the lower one. But if you ever see a push rod with that sort of adjustment all on the top that looks like it shouldn't be there, that's probably one of them early rods from 48 to 55. Now if you're saying how, how do I figure out how many threads per inch there is, especially if it's on the bike. Uh, it's hard to get a ruler or anything in there. You can't exactly measure the threads per inch in an inch. So all you have to do is look at any tap and die set and they all have thread pitch gauges in them. And they're, they're little things that look like that. And they've got all kinds of de different thread pitches on them um, so that you can measure what you have to. So I keep, a, I keep a pair of them there like that. It's a 28 and a 32. And I can stick them right into the push rods while they're on the bike. And they're easy to put in there. So something to think about. Harley Davidson made all kinds of different things and they tried different things and uh, that's what makes it so interesting in, in exchanging parts through the, the year to see what fits what and what exactly goes on that. So if you found this video interesting and you gleaned a little bit of information off it to what may be able to help you out or not, uh, I hope you did. And maybe it's freed up your mind a little bit and give you an idea of what's out there for the old vintage parts and right up into the Evos too as well. You know, it's good to have some kind of knowledge of these things. Checking out and being able to know what works what when you're trying to build up your own engine uh, is invaluable. So look out for our next video and we're gonna do a little bit on lifter blocks themselves and how you, may, how you may have to adapt a set of cases to make your blocks work. We're also gonna show you how to actually do a set of cases and block off those oil holes that a lot of guys are wondering which ones do I exactly do, what, what do I do here? Uh, so stick around with us and we'll show you that. So if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, ring the bell, do those sort of things. And we hope to see you in our upcoming videos. Share, tell others about us. We're growing and it's all thanks to you all out there. Have a good night.